is the FY23 Listos California Statewide Grant LS Program and Target Grant LG Program Request for Proposal Overview Training. On today's agenda, we will be going over the Listos Grant Unit and Contact Information, Program Overview, Purpose of the Program, Eligibility Criteria, Funding for LS Program, and funding for LG program, programmatic components, reporting requirements, proposal rating sheet, and checklist of required Cal OES forms. The Listos Grant Unit is responsible for, several, for the overall grant management of the Listos California Statewide Grant LS program, Listos California Target Grant LG program, Listos California Tribal Grant LI Program, a Listos California CERT Support Grant LC Program, and the Listos California Youth Developmental Grant LY Programs. Questions concerning the RFP, the process, or programmatic issues must be submitted in writing by email to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. Cal OES staff cannot assist the applicant with the actual preparation of their proposal. Cal OES can only respond to technical questions about the RFP during the period of time between the publication date and completion of the RFP process. Program Overview. The FY23-24 Budget Act included a $25 million dollar ongoing general fund appropriation to Cal OES. 8 million Listos California statewide grant LS program via a competitive process. Applicants can apply for up to 1 million and must subaward via second tier subawards to five or more local CBOs within the vulnerable communities they are intending to reach. Each, indiv each individual second tier subaward must be a minimum of $75,000. Um, again, I am going to go over this again. This is a very important piece. If you are uh, applying for a statewide grant, um, this is an impor important piece for you to understand. Um, so applicants can apply for up to $1 million, but you must subaward funds via second tier subawards to five or more local CBOs within the vulnerable communities you're intending to reach. And each individual second tier subaward must be a minimum of $75,000. Um, Six million Listos California Target Grant LG program via a competitive process and applicants can apply for up to 400,000. The grant subaward performance period is June 1st, 2024 through December 31st, 2025. Um, this is another thing for you to, to note and um, is the submission deadline is Monday, March 4th, 2024 by 5 p.m. via email at listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. Um, please make a note of this date. Uh, it is a very uh, important date for you to know if you are, if you do intend to apply for a grant. Um, all of the grants have the same deadline, which is again Monday, March 4th, 2024, by 5 p.m. via email at listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. The purpose of the LS program is to support organizations throughout California that serve multiple counties with equity priority factors located in areas at moderate to high risk of disaster. CBOs throughout the state subgrant to a variety of local CBO partners to provide a disaster training and resources to diverse population disproportionately impacted by emergencies. The goal of this work is intended to increase their community's disaster preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation capabilities. The purpose of the LG program 
is to support organizations throughout California that serve smaller communities with equity priority factors located in areas at moderate to high risk of disaster. CBOs throughout the state can work independently or subgrant with local CBOs to provide disaster training and resources to diverse populations disproportionately impacted by emergencies. The goal of this work is intended to increase their community's disaster preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation capabilities. Um, and here's a couple definitions we want to go over. Social vulnerability. The potential negative effects on communities caused by external stresses on human health. Such stresses include natural or human caused disasters or disease outbreaks. Reducing social vulnerability can decrease both human suffering and economic loss. Vulnerable communities include, but not limited to, immigrants and refugees, farm workers, people with disabilities, seniors slash older adults, individuals and families experiencing homelessness, areas with geographically isolated individuals or families with low broadband subscriptions, and households with limited English proficiency. Eligibility criteria. For a proposal to be considered uh, read and rated, applicants must be a nonprofit organization with a 501c3 status. One proposal must be emailed to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov by 5 p.m. on Monday, March 4, 2024. Proposals must be attached as a single document, for example, a PDF, and email should identify the name of the RFP in the subject line. For example, LG RFP dash my brother's house organization. Funding for statewide LS program. $8 million is available for the LS program. Applicants may apply for up to $1 million and must subaward funds via second tier subawards to five or more local CBOs within the vulnerable communities they are intending to reach. Each individual second tier subaward must be a minimum of $75,000. Again, this is a, a important note to make if you are intending on applying for a statewide grant. Um, this is a requirement, so you may apply for up to $1 million and must subaward funds via second tier subawards to five or more local CBOs. And each individual second tier subaward must be a minimum of $75,000. Subrecipients may request an advance of up to 25% of their awarded funds. There is no match for, required for the LS program. Funding for target LG program. $6 million is available for the LG program. Applicants may apply for up to $400,000. Subrecipients may request an advance of up to 25% of their awarded funds. There is no match required for the LG program. Programmatic components. Managing subgranted funds to local CBOs. Listos California grant program materials. Communication requirement. Training, establish and implement a peer-to-peer -peer engagement approach, identify gaps and propose solutions, host a conversation to identify emergency preparedness needs of the community for integration into local emergency plans, and capture stories of impact. Managing some granted funds to local CBOs. For both statewide LS and target LG programs, 
CBOs identified by the subrecipient will provide disaster training and resources to vulnerable and diverse populations and have the ability to serve as a fiscal sponsor for the subrecipient. CBOs identified by the subrecipient should be informed by the regional picture of vulnerable populations the subrecipient intends to reach. These local CBOs will engage the greatest possible number of vulnerable members to reach the statewide objective of connecting more than 1 million Californians to culturally and linguistically com com competent support. Listos California Grant Program Materials and Communication Requirement. Uh, Listos California branded materials is required and will be provided by Cal OES. If the subrecipient chooses to produce their own materials with Listos California grant program funds, they must be they must receive prior approval from Cal OES, including the Listos California logo. The subrecipient must be must respond within five business days to all Cal OES required programmatic request. Training. The subrecipient must incorporate the materials and resources developed for, it, for and provided by the Listos California grant program in any emergency preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation training conducted with grant funding. The subrecipient must attend Listos California instructional training offered by Cal OES or a Cal OES designated vendor during the first six months of the grant subaward performance period. The subrecipient must attend training classes or, or meetings to receive updates and resources throughout the grant subaward performance period. Establish and implement a peer-to-peer -peer engagement approach. CBOs who represent and connect to the region's most diverse and vulnerable populations will create and implement a peer-to-peer -peer approach to engage and educate the community that reflects the needs of the target population. Each CBO must organize their community to establish a tailored approach by hosting monthly engagement activities to ensure their community, one, is knowledgeable about what to do during a disaster and consider engaging community partners, such as faith-based communities, schools, community centers, et cetera. Two, have emergency preparedness materials and access to information before a disaster hits. Three, is clear on the steps to take to increase their community's disaster preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation capabilities and keep themselves, their families, and communities safe. And four, share final approach and results with the Cal OES Listos California support team. Identify gaps and propose solutions. The subrecipient must identify gaps raised by community input in the peer to peer engagement and organizing process and propose solutions to strengthen local county emergency plans. Share the recommendations on identified gaps and solutions with the Cal OES Listos California program support team. Host a conversation to identify emergency preparedness, needs of the community for integration into local emergency plans. The subrecipient must host a conversation to identify disaster preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation needs of the community of the community for integration into local emergency plans as a joint effort with local leaders across sectors and the county emergency manager. Share outcomes of the conversation with the Cal OES Listos California support team.
Capture stories of impact. The subrecipient must capture stories of impact, highlighting outcomes and results of the local strategies and connections made as part of this effort that illustrate the purpose and intent of the LG and LS program and provide the stories to the Cal OES lease. These stories may be submitted in written articles, videos, and photos. Please ensure that formal action is granted for all stories. Reporting requirement. There are five progress reports required for the program. See the chart below for report period and due dates. of the grant award period. Um, reports are in increments of four or three, sorry, June, July, August. So there's four months there and with a due date, it's going to be the, the end of the following month. So the first report is from June 1st through September 30th with a due date of October 30th. And each month follow the same protocol. Engagement reporting. Engagement reports are based upon direct public engagement activities. Subrecipients are required to submit data directly through an online database immediately after an engagement activity or training commences or no later than the end of each month. This is a competitive grant process, meaning that your applications will be ranked in comparison to all other applications received. On the top right, you'll see an example of the rating sheet and the categories and total possible points. Each of the above categories contain questions assigned to the point value. The point scale is divided into five columns labeled one, two, three, four, and five. The applicant's response to each question is evaluated in the following criteria. Absent, meaning the response does not address the specific question or response that was not provided. Unsatisfactory, the response does not completely address the question. Satisfactory, the response addresses the question and provides a good understanding of the applicant's intent. Above average, the response is above average and provides a clear and detailed understanding of the applicant's intent. And our favorite is excellent, which is the response is outstanding with clear, detailed, and relevant information. So again, when going through the application, please make sure that you're thoroughly going through the questions and answering, answering them accordingly and fully um, we want to get you to where our the response is rated as an excellent so we can, you know, continue processing your application. Proposal required documentation. Here is a checklist that will be included in the application of all the documents that will be required um, with your application. Recommendation for award. Final funding decisions are made by the director of Cal OES. Funding decisions are based on the following. The rank score of the proposal. Consideration of priorities or geographical distribution specific to this RFP. And prior negative administrative and programmatic performance if applicable. Once the decision has been made, the applicant will be notified in writing. Those not selected will receive a denial letter and information on the appeal process. Proposal submission. The proposal package must be received electronically no later than 5 p.m. on Monday, March 4th, 2024 to Listos Grants at caloes.ca.gov. Again, all proposals must be received no later than 5 p.m. on Monday, March 4th via email to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. 
Reminders. Questions concerning the RFP, the process, or programmatic issues must be submitted in writing by email to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. The Cal OES staff cannot assist the applicant with the actual preparation of their proposal. Cal OES can only respond to technical questions about the RFP during the period of time between the publication date and completion of the RFP process. This concludes the Listos California statewide and target grant program RFP training. Next up, we will go over the grant subaward proposal training. Hey, Janine. So yes. I'm um, going to go ahead. There's a lot of questions already, so I'm going to go ahead and answer a few of those questions now um, for about you know a couple minutes, and then I'll let you continue to the next presentation. Perfect. Thank you. Uh huh. Hi, Cindy. This is Katie. Uh, first question: Would you please <laughs> confirm the 5 p.m. deadline is PST? Yes, that's correct. It is Pacific Standard Time. Will we receive a copy of this presentation? Um, if you want a copy of this presentation, please email Listos Grants and we will send it to you once it's available. And if it will be on our website as well. Sorry. Okay. If the org is not a 501c3, can we use the physical uh, sponsor? Uh, for the statewide and target grants, the requirements for eligibility is a 501c3. Um, if you're applying for the CERT support grant, which is at another time, um, that one is, um, you can be a fiscal sponsor. But for specifically for this one today, the statewide and target, the requirement is that you must be a 501c3. To apply for the statewide grant, do you need to be a statewide nonprofit organization? Um, if you're asking for statewide nonprofit, no, you don't have to be a statewide nonprofit, but one of the eligibility requirements is you, you must be a nonprofit organization. Next question, if we are applying for a statewide grant and only request 500K, do we still need to subaward to five CBOs at the 75K range? Uh, if yes, that is correct. If you're applying for the statewide, um, no matter how much you're applying for, you can apply for up to one million. But if you want to only request five hundred thousand, um, it is still a requirement that you sub grant out to five CBOs at seventy five thousand each. Next question: Is there a sub grantee li list? Um. So we do have some lists um, out there. I would have to go find. Oh, no, I'm sorry. There is not a subgrantee list. I don't. I'm a little confused on that question, actually. Um, if you're looking for subgrantees of previous um, Listos programs, we do possibly have something like that we could share. But um, if you're asking for a subgrantee list of who to subgrant out to for the five, um, we don't have. You would have to have that. Um, identify it in your application. Okay, for the statewide grant, do we need to have the five? Okay, that's a repeat of the the previous one. Does sub uh, Actually, sub recipient what? It um it says for the statewide grant, do we need to have the five CBOs pre chosen, or can we just set the budget for five sub grants? Okay. They do need to be uh, pre chosen. Um, if you look in your RFP and look at the um, rating questions, that is one of the questions there that we will be rating on. So um, I would definitely be thinking about who you want to sub grant out to. And then the next one was uh, Does sub recipient CBO uh, have to also be a 501c3? Correct. Yes, they must be a 501c3. Next, if we subgrant to the five CBOs, are we still doing engagements as an organization, or are we just managing the subgrantees? So we are doing engagements, and you should be managing your subgrantees. 
Next question for the target grant is the award based on the number of engagement. If it is, what are the award tiers for the range of engagement? For example, need to engage 20,000 to 25,000 for a 150,000 award. That's a good question. So we removed that from the RFPs this year. There are no tiers. And they're not based on engagements, although um, you should be, uh, we are tracking engagements and there will be um, the portal that uh, you are required to submit through for your engagement reporting. Would two uh, counties served qualify per the statewide grant requirement of geographic coverage? Yes, you can use you can uh, you can use multiple counties. I'll answer one more and then we probably should get going again. OK, similar to Patricia's question is the request requested amount based on number of engagements. No, no, there is no um, tiers in the RFP this year. So uh, the amount that you receive for funding does not um, uh, the engagements do not are not a factor in that. And this is a real quick, simple one, Cindy. If we received the statewide grant last year, could we still apply this year for a target grant? Yes, you can. And we encourage you to. Wait, wait, wait. What is the expected? What is it? What was the question again? If you if apply for receive, a statewide, if we received a statewide grant last year, could we still apply this year for a target grant? I think yes. the answer is the same. Yeah. Yes. The answer is yes. You, if you apply uh, for the statewide and target, I mean, you can for this year. You can either you can only receive funding for the statewide or the target for fiscal year twenty three. So make sure you know which one you want to apply for. But if you, you received a statewide from last year and now you want to apply for a target this year, that is you're more than welcome to. OK, well, I guess that's it for now. We'll continue if we have time at the end. Um, Janine, go ahead. Are you ready? I am sorry I was muted. Um, yep, I'm ready. Okay, Can you see right. my screen? Yep, I can see it. OK, perfect. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm back. Um, so now we uh, so. I'm the program specialist with the Lisa's grant unit. Today we're going to give a presentation on the grant sub award proposal process. And this is the FY 23 Listos California statewide grant LS program, target grant LG program, grant sub award proposal training. Today we're going to provide guidance on the components that are required in a proposal and we are going to review those forms that we referenced just a moment ago and familiarize you with some tools that are available. The process of submitting a proposal begins with a request for a proposal being released. This is this is our competitive process. Within the request for a proposal, you will find fund source information, the background of the program, requirements and expected deliverables and instructions on how to apply. So where do you find a request for a proposal? It can be found on the Cal OES website at caloes.ca.gov. On the upper right hand corner, you will click on initiatives and from the drop down menu, select search for grants, as you can see circled on the slide. Once you're on the search for grants landing page, there are a couple of ways to search. You can find the Listos California RFPs by scrolling down on this page, or you can use a search box. I like to use the search box when I request when I know which request for proposal I'm looking for. You may type in the name of the program in the box. Or if you know the two letter program acronym, you may type that instead. 
Although we are talking about a request for proposal, I would like to draw your attention to the mailing list. As you can see circled in the middle of the slide. Our competitive for process, our competitive process for funding, we send an email notification to anyone who has signed up for our mailing list. Please know the only time we will send an email is when we release a new request for a proposal. Sending a solicitation to fill a position for one of our advisory bodies. Or when we post a public meeting notice. If you are not signed up already, we strongly encourage you to do it so that you can receive these important notices. Cal OES released the Listos California statewide and target grant program request for proposals on January 8th. And applicants have approximately eight weeks from that date to put the proposal packet together from that date. Once complete, applicants will need to email a copy of the proposal packet to the Listos grant unit at listosgrants at caloes .ca.gov. Let's talk about the request for proposal or the RFP itself. The RFP has three parts. Part one is what you have to do. It explains the Public Records Act, submission deadline, eligibility, grant subaward performance period, funding, and programmatic requirements. Part two refers to policies or administrative requirements and includes references to the subrecipient handbook. Components that are required with your proposal. Policies concerning the budget. Administrative requirements. And required or additional forms that may apply towards your proposal. Part three is a checklist that includes a list of the documents that are required with your proposal and links to the most current forms. <laughs> Excuse me. This is an, ex an example of what the checklist looks like. It includes all of the required components and links to each form. Under the additional form section, these forms may or may not be required depending on what you have in your budget. For example, if you do not have out of state travel, you will not need to include this form with your proposal. Once we receive your proposal, there is some status verification that your program specialist will do right away. For those of you who are community based organizations, we will need to check the Internal Revenue Service website and the California Department of Justice website. In the next few slides, I will go over what exactly we are looking for on each one of these sites. But the purpose of this is because the state of California accounting system requires information on these sites to be consistent and current in order to pay you when you submit your report of expenditures and requests for payment. One of the first things your program specialist will do right away is check your IRS status. For those of you who are community based organizations, we will need to check your IRS status. As mentioned before, the state of California accounting system requires information on these sites to be consistent and current in order to pay you when you submit your report of expenditures and requests for payment. Furthermore, your program specialist will verify the DOJ verification through the website listed in the slide here. It can be verified using your FEIN number, which is your employer identification number or organization name. We will have to select charity registration as to the registration type. As a reminder, 
the state of California accounting system requires information on these sites to be consistent and current in order to pay you when you submit your report of expenditures and requests for payment. When we check your registration status, we are looking for it to be current. This makes us happy because we can continue to review and process your proposal. If we see reporting incomplete or delinquent, this makes us sad because we will need you to update your status so that we can continue to process your proposal. If the program specialist contacts you to update your status, please make sure you address this immediately. As we do not have control over the length of time it takes to update your status, and we do not want this to affect our ability to process your proposal or make payments to you if you are selected to receive an award. These are the eight forms that are required with every request for a proposal, regardless of the program type. Please note that most programs will require additional forms, so read your request for a proposal thoroughly. In these next slides, we're going to tell you about some of the more common mistakes that we find with these eight forms so that you know what we are looking for when we review your proposal. You can find these forms at the very end of the RFP in the checklist section with a hyperlink to each form. But first, here are a few helpful reminders. One, read the entire request for proposal to understand what is required for the program. Two, please, uh, please know that all forms have instructions. So if you have questions about a form, look at the instructions first and then email your program specialist for help. Three, use the current forms. Cal OES updates our forms often. If, using, if you are using one of our forms that you've saved on your desktop, it's possible it may have been outdated and you know, you'll, you'll be asked to redo the form, which may delay the processing of your award if selected. OK, let's start with a grant sub award face sheet. The instructions are on the left. And the most recent version of the face sheet is on the right. A few of the most common mistakes we find on the grant sub award face sheet include. One, the last four digits of the zip code are often missing. Please be sure to go to the US Postal Services website to look up your plus four and include that on your face sheet. Um, the disaster program title needs to be matched the name of the program you are applying for. This can be found on the request for proposal. For example, if you are applying to the Listos California Statewide Grant LS program, then write Listos California Statewide Grant LS program on line five. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, as you'll see, the arrow pointing to the left, which is the indirect cost rate and federally approved ICR. This is where you will indicate whether you are using 10% de minimis rate or your agency's federally approved indirect cost rate agreement. A copy of the approved ICR negotiating agreement must be enclosed in your application if you are using a federally approved ICR. If you will not be claiming indirect costs under, th under this award, type NA. OK, this is the table that appears on the face sheet. We've zoomed in so that you can see it easier. This is where your funding information will go, and you can find all this information in your request for proposal. Please note that the grant year and fund, so and fund source are now drop down boxes and column A can be typed in. And column G will automatically total for you. 
in your select for proposal in part one, section F, funding information, you will find the information needed to correctly fill out your face sheet. This is an example of a grant subaward number. There is no need to fill in the grant subaward number in areas on the forms requesting it. The subaward number is given once an applicant has been awarded grant funds. This is a grant subaward contact information form. The instructions are on the left and the most recent version of the form is on the right. Here's a list of things to keep in mind. Remember to use the most updated forms from our website. Don't forget to write the entire nine digit zip code number. Do not use whiteout to fix corrections. Leave the grant subaward number section blank. This will be filled in for you if you are awarded. On lines one and two, make sure the grant subaward director and the number two financial officer are different. They cannot be the same person. On lines two and five, make sure the number two financial officer and the number five executive director are different. They cannot be the same person. The number seven chairperson also cannot be listed again in any of the other positions numbers one through six. Lastly, please make sure the official designated by the governing board on line six is the person who signs the grant subaward face sheet. This is the signature authorization form. The instructions are on the left and the most recent version of the form is on the right. When we review the signature authorization form, we compare it to the contact information form to ensure the grant subaward director, director and financial officer are the same authorized personnel. You can list alternate individuals that have the authority to sign on grant subaward director and financial officer behalf. Just like the grant subaward director and financial officer cannot be the same person, you cannot have one person be an authorized signer in both sides of this form. It is best to have at least one authorized signer for each position. If someone is unavailable and you need to request funds or make a modification, it is easy to do so when you have different when you have a different authorized signer for each position. If not, there's nothing you can do until they return. If you want to change an authorized signers, you must submit a grant subaward modification to Cal OES as soon as possible because it takes approximately two weeks to process. So it is important to make a modification request immediately when the change has been made internally in your organization. This is a current list of the cert certification of assurance of compliance. Documents we have a common mistake is signing and submitting the wrong one. We must receive the one that is tied to the fund source for your program. The checklist in part three of the request for a proposal will tell you which exactly which tell you exactly which one is needed. Another mistake is using an old version of the document. The way to ensure you have the current version is by downloading it from our website. Again, the checklist will have the link for, for the correct and current version. Please be sure you're reading this document in full so you know what the requirements are because when you sign this, you certify that you are compliant.
the red area, the red arrows in some areas I want to bring to your attention. One, subrecipient is the name of your agency. Please have this match what is written on the face sheet. Two, pointing at line one, the applicant should complete the Cal OES program name and the grant subaward performance period. The grant subaward number should be left blank. Your program specialist will fill this in for you. Three, ensure the appropriate signer have signed the document. This would be the official designee by the governing board. And four, for community-based organizations, it must be the governing board chair that signs this section. The budget is normally the next document in your proposal. This is the form 2-106B grant subaward budget pages single fund source. The form has three budget categories. Category A is personnel costs. Category B is operating costs and category C is equipment costs. All three categories must be submitted with your application, whether or not you have items in that category. For example, if you do not have equipment, you can write none requested in that category. All three categories must be included in your application packet. The budget spreadsheet template will automatically add the columns on each tab. Please show the equation on each line item as to how you got the total. The personal category is will you, where you want to put salaries, benefits, and overtime for people you employ at your agency. This is also where you will put your volunteer hours. The operating category is the meat and potatoes of the program. This is where you'll want to put just about everything else, including rent, travel, training, office supplies, etc. The equipment category is where you'll put the non-expendable property having a useful life of more than one year and a cost of $5,000 or more per unit. Just to be clear, if you're buying six laptops at cost of $1,000 each, for a total of $6,000, you would put those laptops in the operating expenses category, not in equipment, because the laptops per unit is less than $5,000. Now let's talk about information we need to see on the budget pages. The gold bubbles you'll see on the next few slides contain the elements that need to be included in each calculation for each line item. In this example, we have a program advocate position that is making $4,000 per month. Please note that the salary cost can be shown as the hourly rate, a monthly rate or an annual salary. Then we want to see the duration. In this example, the program advocate will be paid for 12 months which probably matches the length of the performance period. And then we want to see the full-time equivalent for the position. In this example, the advocate will work 50% of the time on this program. Then finally, you'll want to include a brief description of the line item and explain how it furthers the goals and objectives of the program. For the benefit calculation, you will need to include the benefit rate. In this example, the rate is 22%. Multiplied by the total of salaries of all employees in the budget that receive benefits. In this example, it's $200,000. And finally, you'll want to include a brief description of what benefits are included. <clears throat> Unless you're paying the volunteer a salary, you should have it on the operating section. 
Volunteers are also captured in budget category A. The first element needed is the rate that you have val valued your volunteers at. Please know that this rate cannot exceed what it costs your agency to have a staff person doing the same job and that you can include both salary and benefits when calculating the volunteer rate. In this example, the value of volunteers is $12 per hour. Multiplied by the number of grant, I'm, I'm sorry, by the number of hours to be charged to the grant. In this example, it's 12,000 hours. And then include a description of activities the volunteer will be doing. Now we're going to show you some operating expense exa expenses examples. Operating um, volunteers that are being charged for the following per diem, gas, and mileage should be titled as shown in the slide. Title is volunteer, title of what they are being charged for. In this example, they are charging, they are charging to per diem. And the name of the number of training they were are attending. Again, the elements in the gold bubbles need to be included in each calculation for each line item. For this example, we have postage. The amount for postage is $250 per month multiplied by the duration. In this example, it's 12 months, which probably matches the length of the performance period multiplied by how much the postage will be charged to the grant. Rent is another very common operating expense. For rent, you will need to add up the full-time equivalents or the FTEs in budget category A, personnel services. In this example, we have 4.5 FTEs. Then multiply the 4.5 FTEs by 125 square feet per FTE, which is what allowed as per the subrecipient handbook and then multiply that by the amount you pay for rent per square foot. Please note that the $2 is the up to amount. And you should use your actual rate in your calculation. If your landlord charges you 65 cents per square foot, that's the rate you will need to use. Finally, you will multiply the by the duration if this example is 12 months. If you are claiming Indirect costs under this award, please make sure you are calculating the total correctly. A common mistake is multiplying the total awarded amount by the indirect cost rate. This is not how you calculate the indirect cost. You will first need to calculate your total direct costs. To do this, add up any personal salaries, wages, benefits, operational costs, in up to $2,500,000, I'm sorry, $25,000 of your second tier subawards. But do not include any distorting costs such as equipment, rent, capital expenditures, and second tier subawards beyond the first $25,000. In this example, after doing the calculation, they got $233,215. Once you figured out your direct costs, you simply multiply the total by the ICR, our federally approved ICR. In this case, it's 10%. Please make sure the ICR matches what you entered in section seven of the phase sheet, and you are claiming federally approved ICR, you must include a copy of your approved ICR negotiating agreement in your application. Some final reminders about your budget. Please be sure you refer to the RFP to identify required and prohibited expenses and that you build your budget accordingly. Be sure to use whole dollar amounts only. Often, when your budget is off by a dollar, it's due to rounding errors. So please be sure you are checking the amounts entered in your budget columns. Please include expenses in the correct category. And lastly, all budget line items require a justification and calculation. A request for a proposal requires a budget narrative, which allows the subrecipient to provide detail about their budget. 
The budget narrative typically includes how the budget supports the objectives and activities, the need for administrative costs, and then and the necessity for subcontracts. The most common mistake we see with budget narratives are that sometimes they don't match what's on the budget pages. For example, let's say submitted your proposal packet and during the review, your specialist determines that several corrections are needed to your budget pages. You make those changes for your specialist, but now your budget narrative does not match. So please remember, every time your budget pages are updated, your budget narrative must be updated as well. They must match. Next is the programmatic narrative, where you will provide details about how you will meet the objectives of the program. Please be sure you're reading your RFP and that your narrative addresses each of the questions from the RFP. We have often seen applicants use the same narrative that had been used previous year, even perhaps for another grant. That does not address any or all of the questions from the RFP. Next is the Grants Management Assessment Form. Per Title II CFR Section 200.332, Cal OES is required to elevate the risk of noncompliance with federal statutes, regulations, and grants terms and conditions posed by each subrecipient of pass through funding. This assessment is made in order to determine and provide an appropriate level of technical assistance, training, and grant oversight to applicant for the award referenced above. The questions are related to your organization's experience in the management of federal grant awards. This questionnaire must be completed and returned with your grant proposal materials. For purposes of completing this questionnaire, grant manager is the individual who has primary responsibility for day-to-day -day administration of the grant. Bookkeeper or accounting staff means the individual who has responsibility for reviewing and determining expenditures to be charged to the grant award. An organization refers to the applicant applying for the award and or the governmental implementing agency as applicable. We just spent a significant amount of time talking about the eight required forms for every request for a proposal we release, but sometimes additional forms may apply. Be sure to check part five of your request for a proposal to find out if additional forms may apply for your organization. Some final things to remember. All forms have instructions. Use the forms on the website. Those will be the most current version. The checklist that comes with the request for proposal will tell you which forms are required. Email Listos Grants at listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov if you have questions. We're here to help. Use the checklist in part five of the request for proposal. Okay, everyone, so we did go a little bit over. I apologize for that, and thank you all for staying on. Um, I, um, because of I'm trying to um, be courteous to everyone's time, I'm not gonna be able to answer any more of the questions in the chat, but if you send your questions to our email box at listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov, we are manning that inbox um, five days a week, all day, so um, we should be able to get back to you quickly. Um, so this concludes the Listos California Statewide and Target Grant Program um, um, overview training. And again, this presentation has been recorded. So if you do want a copy of this, please email our Listos Grants and we'll send it to you. Um, and then um, that's pretty much it. Thank you all for attending and we look forward to your applications and have a great rest of your week. Thank you.